Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we are going to clean out the interior and get it all nice and painted black and maybe get some guide coat on the outside of this car. So my first task today is to get in and uh, strip out everything out of the interior now, get the seats out, get the cage back out, clean everything up so I can get it uh, all painted black and looking nice and pretty. Okay, last week after uh, finding those extra bits of rust in the floor, I thought I'd go over the whole floor of the whole car and do a thorough search before I um, go through and paint this and get it all, uh, all perfect. And um, I did discover there's another little tiny, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hole in the floor just here. There's another little spot. It's just a little patch here where obviously some water was sitting and I could see it was a little bit uh, rough. I've gone around all of the edges everywhere where I can... Um, where there could possibly be rust. I've stabbed it all, I've scratched it all, and um, I found this spot, and I'll bring you over to the other side and I'll just show you the uh, other spot I've got over here. And you can see down here, I poked away, and um, yeah, I saw this one, a little rust hole here, and uh, now I can sort of stick my screwdriver through and see that there's actually more rust there than I thought. So um, I'm gonna trim out this whole panel. You can see it's sort of been repaired around there. I don't know if that camera can pick it up, but this has all been replaced, and this has been replaced, but this little corner here is where the two meet and it hasn't actually been fixed. So I'll cut that out and uh, trim that around there and hopefully um, it's still good underneath the, uh, the footrest. So I'll leave that, but uh, cut them out and um, let's do some more rust repair. I am finally happy that the floor is rust free. It's, um, I went over it and over it. I've checked it all, I've gone through it. And yeah, obviously at some stage they've replaced uh, the entire floor plans, but then it's obviously sat outside for a while and um, it's it sort of had water that's obviously sat in the low spots and it's re-rusted out the low spots. And then also where they replaced the old floor, they stopped and there was more rust that was still above where they'd uh, replaced. So they hadn't got that bit. So now I've gone through and everything's been replaced. Everything is, uh, everything is nice and solid. So now it's a matter of going through and cleaning the whole thing up and getting it ready so we can, um, so we can seam seal it. Okay, I gave the interior a, uh, its first quick clean down. Um, before I go too far, I want to get up on this roof, and you can see there's lots of this, uh, there's lots of bits of foam left up here. I want to get this all cleaned up as well because this is all getting painted at the same time. So, so I'm going to get in, I'm going to scrape it all off, sand it all up, get it all uh, roughed up, nice and ready for some paint.
Okay, roof is looking really nice and neat. So last thing is to go over all of the uh, exposed panels with some scotch bright and just clean it all up, get it ready, completely ready for paint. And um, I think we're almost there, getting close. I just remember before I paint, I'm gonna go over all of my repairs. Just, uh, I've got a basic seam sealer from Super Cheap. So I'm gonna go around all of the, uh, the edges of my little repairs with some seam sealer first, and then I'm gonna paint the black. All right, now it's all seam sealed. I'll just uh, leave it to set up for, um, have to leave it for about an hour. Uh, and then I can come back and start making everything black. It's just uh, satin black I'm doing it here. I'm not going anything crazy. Because it's all gonna be covered. I went to that extent on the 911 and I painted the body color through the whole thing. And then realized that it looked terrible anyway because uh, particularly there were bright orange bits sticking out through the black carpet that uh, I had to go back and paint black anyway. Much easier, just paint it black and uh, it'll be nice and neat. So uh, black it is. have I've guide coated the whole outside of the body now so we're at the pointy end getting ready for rubbing it down ready for paint and the inside is now all nice and shiny and black all the way through the car all the way up the roof's done that's all going to be padded on the roof and um, yeah everything's going to be covered here anyway you're not going to actually see any of this but it's just getting it nice and neat and tidy so that I can move on to the outside of the car and forget about the inside that's my plan. All right, several guys mentioned that uh, back when I was playing around lining the bonnet up, uh, I had issues with the bonnet not standing up and that the bonnet stand was on the other side of the car. And uh, several of you mentioned that there's actually torsion bars that I was missing from the front of the car. And I've actually got these old uh, rusty things here off of a, uh, an old rusty wreck. Um, I have to try and get these torsion bars now off of this mount them onto my good hinges, but um, I also need to just hit them with the wire wheel, give them a bit of a clean up because they're looking a bit old and tired and rusty and nasty and um, yeah, see if we can swap them around and then chuck them on the car to make sure everything still lines up the way it should. Thank you. 
Okay, well, it's all slow and steady work, working away, building up towards uh, getting things done. But um, we're getting close to the proper painting stage. Now that I've got the guide coat on the outside, I can actually start um, blocking back the outside and getting everything just right the way I want it. Um, and uh, moving towards that final step of putting some paint on this car. In any case, uh, that is all the time I have today, and um, I suppose that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1973 saw a few changes at Bathurst. The first being an extension of the race from 500 miles to 1,000 kilometers. This was due to Australia's conversion to the metric system and also because the cars were getting faster. When the race started, there were four Fords up front, followed by three Holden Tiranas. The Falcon GT's horsepower showing its dominance. Peter Brock and co-driver Doug Shivers at the Holden dealer team had a plan to use the Tirana's smaller engine to their advantage by going into the pit one less time for fuel. And this was all going to plan as they took the lead after the Ford's first stop, but their plan backfired on them as they pushed too far and they got to the top of the mountain and then ran out of fuel. Shivers managed to roll all of the way downhill until he stopped just outside the pits, but then he had to push the car alone uphill to the pit because his crew were not allowed to help him as that would disqualify him. Moffat went on to win outright in his Falcon GT with class wins also going to a Datsun 1200 and an Alpha GTV. Okay, so today we've got another episode of Mail Time and uh, we have a letter here from Kalamazoo in Michigan. United States. Yeah. G'day Mr. and Mrs. Jeff from the state of Michigan, USA. I've enjoyed your rebuilds and home reno for some time. I've run into many of the same problems you have. I'm currently reorganizing my shop and plan to start a resto mod of my 1949 MG TD in a few months. You might see my uh, MG TD video in uh, my car reviews. My dad has a, uh, a very nice MG TD. Fun cars. Um, I've been posting on YouTube for just over a year and have, uh, having a great time with it, interacting with viewers and creators has been very rewarding. I've included my channel logo sticker and would be honoured if it could share a space on your toolbox. If you have a sticker, I'd love to have one for my channel. If you get a chance to check it out, I'd appreciate a uh, fellow YouTuber's opinion. Keep up the great videos and fun fact segments. Uh, they are very much enjoyed. A fellow YouTuber, William. And so you, you can check out his channel there. There's, uh, there's his uh, channel logo there. It's uh, Southern Engineering. I've, I've had a look before, I've seen some of your comments, and he does some fun uh, home engineering solutions, so uh, check that out, Southern Engineering. In any case, this is going up on the sticker wall. And if you have anything you want to send through and see up on the sticker wall, uh, please send it through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales, 2576, Australia. All right, another week down. The inside is all painted and tidied up, and... Um, yeah, next week it's going to be the fun stuff of sanding. <sighs> it's got to be done. It's your um, favourite, isn't it? Oh, I love it so. It's kind of like the housework. Never yeah. ends. Just have to keep doing it. <laughs> In any case, um, it's, it's definitely coming along. Um, and it's going to be great to really get stuck into this. Once the beetle is done, I can sort of push that aside and just get stuck into this more, which I'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to. Anyway... Um, as always, if you're enjoying the channel, please like and subscribe and you can follow us on Facebook and Jeff does post some Instagram photos and um, if you'd like to have at the channel, merchandise yeah, it's available merch. as well. If you're following my Instagram, I've been, you know, there's this, the cool mugs and, uh, and stuff. Yep. There's a few behind the scenes on Instagram, so it's worth uh, following us there. Anyway. Um, until next week. Until next week. See you guys. <laughs> Being the, see now I've lost my mojo, I've lost it. Followed by three Nissan Taranas. Nissan Ford. No. <laughs> I know that, it's Japanese. That, this is, that's I know, I know, I'm just, I was just testing you because you don't know much about cars. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>